On the 20th of January 1998, at the end of an old Bailey trial that lasted over four months, two men, Jack Wombs and Michael Steele, were convicted of the Range Rover murders of Patrick Tate, Craig Rolfe and Anthony Tucker in December 1995 on an isolated farmland country track in Retton, Essex. All three men in the Range Rover had been found shot dead at point blank range. Both Jack Wombs and Michael Steele went down protesting they had been wrongly convicted, as they still do. Two years before the convictions, in early February 96, the police mounted an undercover operation codenamed Operation Sentry, which was principally targeted at two particular suspects, although others close to them, family and friends, were naturally affected. Michael Steele was one of the two Sentry suspects, the other was Miss Sarah Saunders, the mother of a young child with Patrick Tate. During Operation Sentry, police officers role-played as Belfast-based RA terrorists. The tactics used were clearly intended to convey to the suspects their lives were directly threatened by them, the IRA, and others in their organisation. Although it seems in reality the police did not intend to kill them, they wanted them to believe that the threats were real, and that they were quite capable of carrying them out, and they would be carried out. The police nor the prosecution relied on evidence gained through Operation Sentry to support their resident prosecution. The police gained no incriminating evidence from Operation Sentry. The operation was short-lived and abandoned. It only featured in the Retterdon trial because Steele raised it as part of his defence to show how ruthless and unprincipled the police were in their determination to bring a case against him. The two undercover officers who made phone calls to Saunders and Steele from Belfast began by pre-recording the date, time and the name of the operation, where they were calling from, whom they were calling and their allies. They did not record their proper names, their ranks or where they were based and they did not attend the Retterdon trial. Transcripts of all calls recorded by the police omit their names and to this day their names are still being withheld. The first two phone conversations between Steele and these undercover officers took place on the 8th of February 1996. Steele alleges these officers propositioned him to participate in a criminal conspiracy to do with drug trafficking, which he firmly rejected. At this rejection, on this very first day, threats were made. They vowed to carry out their threats by crossing to the mainland and coming to where he lived. Neither of these calls are in transcript form. The police claim they weren't recorded. Steele believes these police failures are explained by the fact the recordings would be too incriminating. More calls were made the next day. They were recorded and transcribed. They make it plain that calls had taken place the previous day and that police threats had surfaced. The 26th of February 96 was an important century day. The undercover officers had previously been leaving answer phone messages for Sarah Saunders to contact them. And that evening, she'd finally called them back and spoken to Billy. She'd informed him she was worried for a two-year-old child. Billy was going to fucking sort things, one way or the other. This officer later phoned Steele. His manner, belligerent and pre-planned from the outset. We were talking to that fucking girl today. The call being referred to here is the death and car bomb threats. There were two calls that night to Steele. Neither were recorded. But fortunately, Steele did their work for them. As with the initial 8th of February calls... Still believes the 26th of February calls were are missing because they are also too incriminating. Either way, this operation was hardly being properly conducted or supervised. The following transcript is a tape recorded conversation of undercover officer Billy pretending to be the IRA and Mickey Steele for the 9th of February 1996. I'm a serving police officer who for the purposes of this operation is known as Billy. It is 6.49pm on the 9th of February 1996 and I'm about to phone a person that is known to me as Mickey Steele or Mickey the Pilot in relation to a triple murder in Essex 1995. I now replace the receiver. Hello? Hello? Oh fuck off. Hello? Hello? It is now 6.50pm. I rang Mickey Steele and he just said, oh fuck off. I believe I ring him again. Hello? 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 What you fucking? Hello? Hello? Mickey? Mickey, it's Billy here, a friend of, an associate of mine who rang you. I think you might have got the wrong idea, Mickey, because I don't want to annoy you in any way. 
But what has actually happened, if you give me a couple of sec seconds of your time to explain to you, three people who were mutual acquaintances of ours have had quite a considerable amount of money, yeah, for a commodity from which time to time we got from them, yeah. Now, no doubt due to our own greed or whatever, somebody obviously took umbrage at them and goodbye them. But unfortunately, I'm left in a situation that my organisation has lost quite a considerable amount of money. And also, we have no commodity. Now, I don't know if it's got nothing to do with you, but I was given your name. By who? Well, I mean, I don't want to talk on the phone, Mick. That's, that's, well, there's no way I'm speaking to anyone. And, and what amazes me is this, yeah? Is first, whoever's given you my name, yeah? Amazes me. And if you've given people money, just tell me something. What sort of money are you talking about? Well, it's quite a large amount of money. How much? Sorry? How much? It's about, well, 30, 40,000 pound? Yeah. And the problem is, I sort of what would be equivalent as a manager director's post in, the, uh, in my organisation, you know? Yeah. And the people that is, I'm sorry, one of my associates I know talked to you, and he may have been a wee bit abrupt to you, but some of us just find it hard to swallow. But as I was explaining, I was explaining to them, Mickey, I don't believe there's actually any direct fault of yours that they lost their money. It's got absolutely the, it's got absolutely to do with me. Yeah, well, see, and I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, and what amazes me, if you and your company, whoever it is, has given people money, yeah? I mean, why are you ringing me? I don't know. Well, I cannot help you. Let me tell you where I reckon your money is, shall I tell you? Yeah. Hmm, well... I think the police have got it. The police have got it? Yeah. Well, we had, let me tell you something, right? Mm. One of the gentlemen you're talking about mm -hmm, had money in his home. Now his girlfriend, right, mm -hmm, has been trying to claim that money back. Yeah. And they will not give it to her. They said it's got to go to probate. Now then, we understand as well, I've heard from these people, that any person that had a large amount of money, yeah. Now then, when the police went to his home, there was obviously his wife there. Now then, whether they got the money or not, I don't know. But it was like the previous person who was, had no one at home. They searched the premises and took the money. Yeah. And they would not release it. Mm -hmm. Now then, in the other situation, and I'll tell you his name, Tony Tucker, if that's who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Right. Now then, oh, what I understand, it wasn't at home when he got his property raided and they turned his house over. Uh -huh. Now, I would imagine the money must be in their, their good hands. Well... Well, Mickey, I'll be honest with you. Now, there's an assumption. Yeah. An assumption I've applied, but what happened at the home of one of the persons when it was turned over? There was absolutely nothing there. And they took liberties. They went into his home and they took cash from their house. Yeah. Now then, the person who was entitled to it has spoken to me. She tells me she can't get her hands on it for love or money. Yeah. She spent £5,000 on funerals and burials. Mm-hmm. Now, what she's got to do is to get that back is to produce evidence of what money she spent to even get that money. Yeah. I mean, I honestly don't know where you're ringing me. I can't help you at all. Well, well, can I explain to you? Well, I was hoping that we've got something for your mutual benefit. I'll explain to you. I had sort of given up hope on that money, for one, was, well, I reckon that anyway, whatever the cunts have been at, they'd lost it or whatever done or something. And yeah, in any event, even if the fucking cunts, well, obviously you're talking to me about, I don't know. See, see, well, yeah, I know I'm only explaining to you my predicament and see if the cops have got it. Unfortunately, my personal circumstances just leave me I'm unable to claim the money. Yeah. For what I'm saying is, well, why? Well, what I would be interested in and what I was led to believe, you see, was in actual fact, the commodity in which what we were dealing with. Yeah. It had an actual fact these or, well, should we call them friends? Use the word loosely that that they actually had. We're able to get these from you, see? Now that amazes me, yeah? That totally amazes me, because that is totally untrue. Yeah, well, well, what actually amazes me even more, and what makes me suspicious about you people, mm -hmm, is that you've got my phone number, and that you're ringing me over it. Mm -hmm. now, that, now that makes me suspicious. Well, I mean, Mickey, the best way to... I mean, who gave you my phone number? Well, the best way, the best, who gave you my number? Well, well, well I'll tell you when I see you. No, no, you know I'm not speaking to or seeing anybody. To be honest with you, I've got nothing and absolute sweet sod all to do with what you're talking about. You see, Mickey, I mean, I would prefer it if that you'd possibly come to Belfast. <laughs> Listen, yeah? You must be joking. What do I want to go to Belfast for? Well, we were thinking, 
I know what you're talking about. This is what really irritates me, you see. Yeah, well, I mean, well, I presumed you was in business and no, no, I'm not. Well, no. Well, well, X, let me tell you something. Excuse me for saying, Mickey, I actually think you and I mean my organisation. Well, well, but listen, yeah, don't talk to me about organisations, yeah, and what else have you, yeah. See, someone's given you my phone number. It's not John McCarthy, is it? Well, I've known him, I know him, but I'm not actually an associate of him. Well, you're not an associate of mine, and by the sounds of it, yeah, how the hell were you ever an associate of the other three? I don't know. Uh Uh-huh, well, well, I mean, I find it hard to believe what you're saying, yeah, extremely hard, and, mm mm-hmm, I take umbrage that you start ringing me up, insuating over the phone, it had something to do with what the money was going to buy, I assume. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, now listen, you've had no dealings with me at all, I don't know you from Adam, yeah. And I can assure you that I don't hold this money. In fact, I had soddle when it comes to concoctual events. Yeah. And I can tell you now, I know absolutely nothing about it. And if this money is about, I would go find in the person's wife. Yeah. Because surely she must be holding it. Now that is a guarantee. If you'd give it to them, she must have it or know where it is. Well, and if she hasn't got it, the police have taken it from the property. Yeah, well, I was trying to explain, say, to my friends, Mickey, that in actual fact, I didn't want them to go looking for the money, yeah? Because, I mean, as far as I can see, there's been enough grief one way or another. Yeah, well, it's not of your money, though. No, well, I wouldn't like to think it would be, no. Obviously, I mean, well, I shouldn't ask if you wouldn't think it was. No, but, I mean, I don't want to be rude to anybody, yeah. But put yourself in my situation. You have rang me up. You've been giving my phone number and technically you're harassing me over something I know nothing about. Mm. Now then, I can only give you my word that I don't know sweet soul about your money. I don't have your money. Since I don't have your money, that's a guarantee. I don't want aggravation from it. No. That's like when your friend rang me the other day. I mean, yes, his attitude, first of all, when he did ring me, I laughed that somebody was ringing me from Belfast who'd got my phone number. Now, I assumed he'd gotten this from someone like John McCarthy. Well, you see... Now, I can't see the other people wanting to give. Why would they want to give? You tell me, who would give you my telephone number? Are you a policeman? (laughs) You're great, Mickey. We'll tell you no, Mickey. I tell you, all I was interested in was trying to recoup some money. Now, if you're telling me, and I accept it, you're saying to me, you haven't got the money, and you know nothing about the money. Why would I have it? This is what I can't understand. Well, what I can't accept is that a very close associate of mine, who who I've known for some time, tells me that you were supplier of the commodity. <laughs> Do you think? Yeah. Well, you're wrong. Well, I... I would have I'd have great difficulty in telling my friends that you don't have anything to do with that, you know? And I was hoping that we could have come... That's why I was going to meet you myself. If you couldn't have come here, then I would have come to you. But I'm trying, I'm trying to recoup some of the mess which we have... Well, I... Hello? Hello? Oh shit. It's now 7.04pm and I'm ringing this number again to ring me on my car phone. Mickey. Mickey. Hello. Mickey. Listen. Have you got a pen? Could you ring me on this number? That mobile number of yours. I can't. I can hardly hear you. Look. Let me. Hold on a minute. Just hold on a minute. Yeah. Right. What number? 01232 01232 403 750. 403 what? 750. Yeah. What do you want me to do? Well, can you ring me? I can hardly hear you on that mobile phone. I'll ring you. Yeah, okay, thanks. Hello? Hello. How's it going? Right then. What is it you want to say? Four times? Five times? Did you hear the news? No? Oh, God. Apparently, apparently the ceasefire is over. Apparently there's a bomb over at Canary Wharf. Aye, it may be so far over here at the moment. What happened at Canary Wharf? Oh, a bomb apparently just went off. What did? A bomb. Did it? I... Huh? Well, listen. I'll tell you what it is, Mickey, anyway. I don't know if you're going to get the wrong idea of this. We'll tell you because, I mean, you're arguing and barging and shouting. i tell you, look. We're up Sheep Creek without a paddle, you know? You know what I mean? We're lost. Yeah. I mean, all in all, I've been looking on. And I mean, all right, you can say piss off and I'll go out there, but... Yo, yeah, well, look, listen, let me explain something to you. You've rang me out of the blue. Yeah, okay. Now, I don't know you. I've never heard of you. And even your story to me seems very, very far-fetched. Right, 
Now, what concerns me is someone's giving you my phone number. Yeah. Okay. Then you've told me, you've told me, or someone's told you certain things. Yeah. Right. Now, what obviously concerns me because of obvious reasons, right, is that somebody now, now I mentioned to you John McCarthy. Yeah. And you tell me you know John McCarthy. No, no, I didn't say I know, I knew John McCarthy. I thought you did. I said, I said I've known of John McCarthy. Well, isn't that the same thing? No, I mean, I don't know him. I've never met him. I know of him. You see, Mickey, it's just the way, I mean, we know about you from because of, of the dealings which we, these people were having with us. I've got, well, that is where you're wrong. Yeah, well, now listen, I'll tell you something. Mickey, I mean, well, I would like you to have a look. I mean, look, we're going to be honest with you and tell you the truth about things. You're saying to me, I mean, that these things, these things I could say to you, do you know what I mean? We're not absolute lemons. I mean, I know Paddy's Paddy, you know what I mean? But we're not, we're not complete. No one's trying to take you for lemons. The thing is, yeah, listen, you obviously seem to be under the wrong impression. Yeah, that I've got your money. No, no, no. I'm not under the impression. I hope you haven't got my money. I've got, I've got, I hope you haven't got my money. I'm not under the impression you've got my money. What I'm trying to say to you is, but why are you ringing me? Well, well, I'll tell you why. Because you're the only link that I've got with the commodities that we were getting. Now, but then you see you're wrong. See, you've been told whatever you've been told. See, yeah, it's wrong. You've been told lies. Well, well, that's going to disappoint me greatly. See, because I'll tell you why, right? Yeah. Now, if you really knew these people, yeah, I mean, really knew them, mm -hmm, you would know where they got a lot of their commodities from. I do, yeah? I do, yeah. You mean me, yeah. <laughs> no, no. See, and this is where you're, you're out of date out of touch. Well, well, I mean, I'm not so out of date. I mean, they're stiff. I mean, they're stiff. And unfortunately, I mean, violence to me. I hate things like that because violence, violence to me. Well, we have, hold on a minute. Now, what are you telling me? You ain't, you're not the cause of their demise, I hope. No, nothing. No, no. I mean, the fact that you tell me you owe them 40, they owe you 40,000 pound. Well, they're fucking stiff. So that's fucking down to Swanee. Tell me, mate, when did you give him this money? I, when did you give him this money? Why? Well, I'm interested. I'm interested. Well, look, Mickey, I'll tell you what I'm interested in. i tell you what I'm interested in. And I don't like talking about it on the phone. I mean, I have to. If you can't come to Belfast, I'll fly into any airport. But there's no point. Yeah, well, you know, but what I can, what, you know, I can't help you. Yeah, well, see, listen. It doesn't matter how, you know, I just can't help you. I mean, I don't know where, if. Can you tell me, when did you give them this money? Well, Mickey, come on, tell me when you give it to them. Could you, could you think, could you think about it? Could you think about it and ask, ask a few friends? Yeah, right. And I think you'll find, I think you'll find that my name, we Billy, and I can prove who I am. I mean, you're saying, I tell you, you seem to be, it took me, who am I? It took me some considerable time, Mickey. Yeah. To find you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but listen. Now, what I'm saying is, I'm not. I'm not that hard to find because I can be quite easily found. And if you want to ever find me, all you have to do is find me is go to Pat's Bar. Pat? Pat's Bar in Belfast City Centre, all right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But listen, I've never been to Ireland in my life. No. But you go wherever you like to find me. But what I'm saying is, look, you don't understand... Yeah? You say it took some considerable time for you to find me. Yeah. Now, whoever's given you my phone number to contact me, I'd like to know when did you get told it. Well, yeah, if you'd meet me, there's no point. Well, if you'd meet me, that would explain to you exactly what you could explain to me over the phone because, no, I don't want that. I want, you don't understand. I don't want to get involved. Well, better not to say on the phone. Well, there you are. I mean, see, I mean, like I said, I could be talking to a policeman. I don't know. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying to you. Tell me something. That, that, that's what I'm trying to say to you. That's why, Mickey. I will tell you, look, that's why it's very important that you know who you're talking to. Yeah, but, and let me explain something more to you, yeah? This is where you've got it. I mean, that you don't understand. When you say talk to people, do you think that I'm a person? Now, who would I speak to? Yeah. Tell me who I speak to. Yeah. Now, 
What you don't understand, see, you don't know me, obviously, yeah? Never met me, I've never met you. You're wee Billy. I've never heard of you, yeah? Now tell me something, out of all the three persons we were talking to, who did you actually deal with? Does it matter? Yes, it makes a lot of difference. No, it doesn't matter, but it sort of puts him in a picture of a lot of things. Who did you actually deal with? Well, you mentioned his name earlier. Well, I mentioned two. Yeah, well, I mean, well, I say I only met the guy. Well, I didn't even meet him. I saw them once. Now, what I'm saying is I can get the people. But all I'm saying, Mickey, look, I can get the people who deal, who deal with this to meet you if you want to meet them. But I told them you don't understand. But I told them that I wanted to try to sort this out for our mutual benefit because but you don't understand. You get you get who you want to sort it out. No. We don't want, we don't want, that's what I'm trying to say to you. I don't want people to sort this out. You did. We all know, I know Mickey where we stand in this and what I want to ask you to do and what I'm meaning. I'm not going to, you mean, but you're wasting your time. Yeah, yeah, well, because you're talking to someone who just doesn't know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, look, I don't want to waste your time. Exactly. And I don't want to waste yours. I don't want to waste your time. But what I'd like to do is, yeah. What I'd like to think about is, can I come to see you? Because, what for? Tell me what for. Because I want to discuss with you. Well, you must understand. You must, because we need, what I need, I need, we need to make a few pound out of this. We need to make, but you don't understand. See, now, this is what I, this is what is beginning to give me the arsehole. Mm -hmm. You're coming back to me by the sounds of it. Mm -hmm. For what you say, £40,000 you've given to someone else. I don't want anything for nothing, Mickey. I don't want anything for nothing. All I want to, look, I don't, you've said, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, well, you say you don't, but what I can tell you is I'm not going to play with your names or anything. All I want to do is I want to try to get the commodity, which I was getting off these people. Do you understand me? Yeah. Now, I've lost a lot of dough. Now, if you don't understand, if you, if you can organise, how can I get their commodity? She doesn't know where they got it from or how they got it. Well, I understood, I understood, and it was my understanding that some people who feel a little bit more strongly than I do, yeah, that you were the person, you were the person, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, they've been, they've been given a bum steer. They've been given a bum steer. Yeah, well, you know, to be honest with you, mm -hmm, I find all what you're telling me incredible. Well, I... I wouldn't find it, I wouldn't find it that hard, hard actually to convince these people, well what, that, uh, that, well, I mean, I don't know, I don't know what you're trying to convince me, well Mickey, I want to be, I mean to be honest with you, let me tell you something, to be honest with you Mickey, you know, you know the score here, well, I mean, I know, it's exactly, I know, yeah, well yeah, you know the score, and I mean, you know what I'm saying, no, I don't know, see, well, this is what amazes me. Who gave, who did you meet when, and when did they give him this 40 grand? Why have I, now tell me when and where and who gave it to you. Well, I'll do that. I'll tell you. Go on then. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. I'll tell you if you think. If you think, because I think we've said enough on the phone at this moment in time. If you think, if you think you'll meet me, okay? And that's what you want to know, if you want to know the date and the time. But there's no point. I will tell you the date and the time, but there's no point if you're telling me or meeting me. I'm not going to meet you. I mean, I don't want to get involved with anybody. Well, Mickey, unfortunately, and that's what I'm saying, unfortunately, you are involved. I am not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let me tell you something. This is the last time you ring me. Another one other. One other little point as well I'm going to give you to tell him, right? I don't know if it was you or someone else who spoke to me yesterday. Was it you? Who I'm speaking to now, you're Billy, yeah. So who am I speaking to yesterday? John? John, yeah. Yeah. He mentioned, he said something to me, did I know Oakland's? I said, yeah. Now let me tell you something, Oakland's is history, yeah? So this is what I mean. But that, I know, I know. But he has got, well, I tell you, well, I tell you, Mickey, that's what I'm trying to say to you. John, John gets a bit wee hot-headed. And John, and John, you know, what I'm saying to you is, do you see this carry on? I mean, I don't want to, look, I don't want, you see, Mickey, I have to be honest with you. Now, I mean, all I want to do is scrag up a few pounds. Now, you're saying to me, now, no, piss off, piss off, no, you're not getting out of me. No, I'm not.
I'm not looking for it out of you. But what I do, from what I know you can do, no, you do not. And I know you can do it, that, oh, well, well, I know, I know. No, you don't. How do you know? Well, I believe the people that's telling me, I believe the people that's telling me that they're telling me. You do? Yeah. Well, who's telling you? Well, I can tell you, but when I see you, who's telling me? No, you're not going to see me, mate. You're not going to see me. Yeah, well, who's been telling you? Who's been telling you? Mickey, I want to see you because I'm going to have to see you because if I don't see you, you won't. I know these guys that are going to come and see you. Well, you send them. You send them. You'll just be wasting your time. Because, well, like I said, Oakland's is history. Yeah, well, well, so you know. I mean, and the thing is, don't keep ringing me up because what I'll do is I'll just change the fucking mobile number. You know, I'm not going to keep ringing you. But what I can tell you is Mickey, and I can tell you, Mickey, and I mean this, and I don't, I'm not threatening you in any way whatsoever. Yeah, but the only way, yeah, the only way you're going, going to get away from, get away from, yeah, well, from the people I'm telling you, if you're stonewalling me because you're not listening to the shit, yeah, well, I'm listening to your shit, mate. Well, I can tell you, let me tell you something. You might emigrate. What? I don't have to emigrate because that's the only way because I'm going to, I'm going to, because I'm going to follow this up. You can't because, because look, look, I'm going to, I'm trying to get this. I know Mickey, you know the score here. You know the fucking score. So now, now I know exactly where we stand. I'm talking to some idiot, some cunt. Yeah? Right. Sorry? Whoever gave you my fucking phone number. Oh, well, don't use... You want to go back to them and fucking question them. Don't ring me again, mate. Ta-ta. I'll be in touch. The following transcript has the date unknown of undercover officer Billy, pretended to be the IRA and Mickey Steele from February 96. Hello? Hello? What? Yeah. Hi. Hello? Sorry, someone's, someone's left the phone. Hang on. Now listen. We were talking to that fucking girl today. What girl? Fucking Sarah. Fucking Sarah who? Well, I tell you, Mickey, we... Pardon? Mickey, it's time we spoke the fucking truth here. Yeah, well, go on, tell me something. Who is... Who's Sarah? And what have you been talking to this Sarah bird for? Well, because it's fucking Pat. We knew Pat. And you told us the fucking... The girlfriend had the money, right? I tell you what. The girlfriend had the money. I didn't tell you fuck all. You fucking did. Now, what did I tell you, Mickey? I told you. Mickey, Mickey, listen to me. Listen to me. I told you. Talking fucking... If there was any money, the police had it. Right. Well, we did fucking tell you. We did tell you. Unfortunately, I'm just not in the fucking position to go get it. But let me tell you, I... Who do you think I am? Oi, I don't give a shit anyhow. Well, it's time you fucking did because... I don't. Listen, listen. You don't bother me. We don't? No, you don't bother me. Well... What did I tell you? I have fucking A-levels. You have, have you? A-levels in fucking whacking fucking people. Have you? I've got A-levels in it. Oh, good. And I fucking tell you what? Wait until I tell you straight. So who did you whack then? Who was the last person you whacked? Listen to what I fucking tell you, my friend. The ceasefire went a couple of fucking weeks ago. Yeah? You, as far as you're fucking concerned, your fucking ceasefire's going. Good. Do as I fucking tell you. So tell me something. Just fucking listen to me. I'm listening. Well, I'll fucking tell you. If I don't get some fucking answers soon, you're what? If I don't get some fucking answers, answers to what? I've got a way. See what I fucking do. See what I fucking do. Tell me who's got a fucking... Listen. You seriously think that you're worrying me? Pardon? Don't talk to me like I'm some sort of fucking asshole. Yeah? Well, you're not what I call a... You haven't got a full load, mate, have you? A fucking full load? I'll... I'll fucking have you. Contact you. Full load? Tell me what you've got A-levels in. Right. What did I fucking tell you? Tell me what you've got fucking A-levels in. You're fucking me. Psychological or what? Right. Well, I did fucking tell you. Don't you talk down to me. Don't you fucking talk down to me. You're beginning to give me... Listen, you're beginning to irritate me, am I? Yeah. To fucking irritate you? Yeah. What did I fucking tell you? I'll irritate you. I'll be in touch with you very fucking soon. Good. And I will irritate you. Let me tell you something. 
You watch your fucking car. Let me tell you something. I'm going to look forward to seeing you. The following is the transcript of the tape recorded conversation of undercover officer John, pretending to be the IRA, and Mickey Steele from the 26th of February 1996. Hello? Hello? Mickey? Yep. What about you? Right. Now this is the last time you get my attention. Right. Okay? Right, Mickey. When Billy was spe last speaking to you, yep, you, as far as he told you, you said him that's Pat's girlfriend. Pat's got a friend? Yeah. Pat's got a friend. Yeah. I suppose he's got a lot of friends, hasn't he? Okay, let's not fucking... I don't understand what you're talking about. What do you mean he's got a friend? No, you told Billy, yeah, that his girlfriend, phone his girlfriend. Now, that's what I've just done tonight, is phone his girlfriend, and I've passed that on to Billy. Now, listen, what? I haven't said to Billy or anyone that he's got a girlfriend at all. Hang on, Mickey, yeah? You fucking did. Listen, I know what I said. No way did I say, he no doubt has got a girlfriend, yeah? Right. Several, I would say. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, the reality of the matter is, Mickey, that I don't know who you think is phoning you here, or you think it's a couple of assholes phoning you, or whatever. It doesn't really matter, because go on, carry on, carry on. Right. Well, you you think what you want, but Pat, Pat, Pat was a friend of ours. Yeah. The people from this side of the water. Mm -hmm. Now, we got paid a considerable amount of money mm -hmm, up front for stuff that we were sort of giving in good faith to him. Yeah. Now, for that money, we were doing certain things for Pat. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, we have ordered some stuff off him. Right. And we'd promised to look after him once we'd got the stuff in case something terrible happened. And it would appear something terrible has happened as well. Yeah, yeah. Without us knowing about it. Yeah. Now, we are concerned here on this side of the water. Mm -hmm. Now, that possibly Pat has been talking when he should have been listening. Say that again. Say that again. That Pat has said more than his prayers. More than his what? More than his prayers. I can't... I don't understand what you said. He said... He said more than he should have. Right, right. Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah. Now, which may affect us on this side of the water. Mm-hmm. Now, as I say, we've paid that money up front. Now, I was speaking to... I was speaking to that lassie Sarah tonight. Uh-huh. Right, mm. -hmm. She tells me she knows nothing about his business. She, mm hmm. This stuff has. And you're telling me that you know nothing about this, about his business, mm hmm. Now, the reality of it is this someone knows about his business. Yeah? Now, I'm not into the business of sick and phoning people, harassing them the whole telephone call, mm hmm. I just want to get this freaking sorted, mm hmm. I just want to get it sorted. Now, we have money outstanding and it's going to have to be got back. Who am I speaking to now? John or Billy? This is John. This is John, yeah? Well, so you've told me all this before, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. But I don't know if you're if you're taking me serious. Well put it like this. Now how would you feel if someone rings you, puts this and puts you in a situation? Now, what you're putting to me that you've given somebody money. Yeah, not me. Yeah. You've given somebody money. Yeah. Then all of a sudden I've got a phone call, mm-hmm, from you. Mm-hmm. With all those sort of threats, yeah? All sorts of threats. Well, I mean, your friend Billy was just done making all sorts of threats. So anyway, let me finish. I really don't know what it is this man wants. And I really don't know what it is you're ringing me over. All this money that you've lent, you've given it to Pat, have you? Yeah. You've given it to Pat. Mm-hmm. When did you give it to him? When did we give it to him? Yeah. Well, is that really... Hang on a minute. Hang on. A couple of uh, passed me here. The fact of the matter is it was given to him. Well, when? That's what I can't make out. When was this given to him? When? Or well, what does it matter? Are you looking at the date that it was flipping handed to him? Yeah. Well, you know, you're saying that this for a man who says you know nothing about it. Well, I'm interested. I'm curious because I'd like to know when you gave it to him and where. When and where did you give it to him? I don't think it's, it's really relevant. It is because I tell you why. I mean, I've spoken to what I call close friends of his, right? Close friends, right? And I've... I've told him about this phone call, mm-hmm, this phone call I've had from you, and I sort of found it ironic that, right, someone's given my mobile number and they rang me, right, right, and as I said, do you know that he had any Irish friends dealings with anyone in Ireland, yeah, and they seem to think no, people tell us this, where, where was, where the big lad was in the latter part of this year, yeah, so well, says, so will you tell me where he was, well, I know exactly where he was, well, then you tell me where he was. 
I know exactly where. Well, then tell me the name of it. What? Tell me the name of it. Whitemore. Right, Whitemore. So it was in Whitemore, yeah? Yeah. Now, carry on from here then. So what is it? What's with the S? So someone in there had a deal with Pat while he was away. Is that it? No. This is you saying this. This is you saying this, Mickey. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm surmising now. You got it. Go on. I don't know. Well, you seem to surmise quite a bit. Yeah? Yourself. Well, I have to because you tell me nothing, you see. Well, what do you want? What do you want me to tell you? Well, I mean, you're ringing me. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me that you've lent Pat. I didn't lend him anything. Or you've given him money. For something we had given to him. Yeah? Which we haven't got. Now, you know him personally. No, I haven't been to Whitemore myself. No. But what you're saying is, do you know the man you're talking about? Do you know him personally? Have you met him? No. Well, that, that makes a lot of sense because, why, I would say anybody, hmm, hmm, who hands someone £40,000 over to the man, yeah, I mean, I find it incredible. Why? I mean, I say anybody who hands somebody £40,000 over to that man, yeah, I mean, I find it incredible. Why? Well, because, I mean, what I know of the person, yeah, what I know of him, mm hmm, I find it, well, well, I wouldn't trust him with a tenner. Well, I. So now you're telling me, now you're telling me you're giving him how much? See, well, you've got, a, you, you've put a figure on it. Well, you just, I think you told me £40,000. That's correct. Well, shall I tell you something else? Yeah, I've made phone calls, right? Well, because obviously, like, when somebody rings me up, I mean, I find it absolutely incredible that you rang me, right? Now, I rang a few people up, mm hmm and made inquiries, mm hmm and funnily enough, he had £40,000 off of someone else, I was told, mm hmm Shall I tell you the name, shall I? You go for it. Their name is Blundell, and I've been told, I don't know them, mm hmm but I've been told, Johnny and Eddie Blundell, right, and they come from Essex, right. Now, I find it odd, right, and I find it odd that they've lent him £40,000, mm hmm or given him, yeah. And you've lent him exact same or given him the same amount of money, right? Now I find that odd. How, how, you know, you're, you're, well, how many £40,000 has this man? You're, you're telling me this, Mickey, and you know that certain things that, yeah. Well, do you know these people I'm mentioning? Never heard the name before. You never heard them? Well, I've been told from someone who was close to him. Mm hmm. He wasn't, he wasn't, um, known to me at the time, right? But I've um, since you rung him, I've rang around because I've been concerned that someone's got my number and talking to me like you've been talking to there like an old Dutch uncle. Yeah. And I find it very odd you've actually come into me. Right. You see, well, I... And then what? And you, through my inquiries, let me finish. Right. And through my inquiries, right, I find that he had £40,000 of someone else. Right. If that's true, right. Now, you see, what I can't make out, see, you've given him £40,000. You people amaze me. How? The trust, the trust you've given this person. You know what amazes me, Mickey, is that you're not taking this seriously now. I'm taking it seriously. I mean, I mean that, that funny thing amazes me. Go on then. Because you know, as I said in the past, I'm here to sort this out. Yeah, you know, and it will be sorted. Yeah, but you, let me explain something to you, you see. What? This is what I'm trying to tell you. Now you, you want to sort something out, right? Now and then to sort something out, you're talking to the wrong person, right? I mean, I've told you this a million times and, yeah, but you're not going to get nowhere. Let me finish. Right. And the fact is, you're not getting nowhere. Nowhere with this is absolutely, as I say, it's irritating me. Yeah. You see, and it's, well, of course, so I'd hate it. Yeah, good. I mean, you're the man who's, what do you mean, good? What well, I mean, good. Because if you were foolish enough, yeah, or not, if it wasn't you, if someone... If he's, ta if he's talked someone into giving him £40,000, yeah, you don't want to come knocking on my door. Well, at the end of the day, you know what it's like. Someone is responsible at the end of the day for it. Yeah, hmm. And you think I am, do you? For the mess people leave behind them. Yeah. Now, and you think I am? Uh, yeah. All right. Well, that's absolutely, absolutely it then. Because you think I am. That amazes me. You know, see, that amazes me. All I was, the fact you've come to me, I haven't given the number. You know, at the end of the day, the big lad, you know, has mentioned you. Yeah? As far as I'm aware. Oh, uh, let, let me tell you something. I mean, I've been behind bars with the man. I did a long, long time behind bars with him. 
You done a long what? A long time behind bars with him. Right, right. I mean, that's how the man knows me, right? And to be perfectly honest with you, as I say, you've come to me and I'm amazed you've got my phone number. Yeah. And that you're, let's say, pressuring me for your £40,000. Well, let me tell you something, right? I don't know sweet fat animals about it, right? Didn't, haven't got a clue about it. I've made inquiries and I find it ironic that other people have given him the same amount of money. Now then, I wonder what's happened to it. Perhaps I've got it under my floorboards. Now there's a thing, eh? Now there's a thing, have you? Well, I haven't got floorboards for a start and I've got a concrete floor, right? And I wish that I did have that sort of money about me because if I did, I'd be a very happy man, right? Now then, what I want to say to you, right, is the fact you keep ringing me up here, I mean, every fortnight or so, yeah? I mean, Billy was it? Billy was on the phone just now making all sorts of frets, you know, like I said, I'm one of these people, I'm a little bit laid back, nothing really worries me, mm mm-hmm. And Billy was saying to me that he's going to, he's got A-levels in, what is it he said? A-levels in whacking people, I think his expression was. I honestly don't give. The idea behind Operation Sentry was to get a meet with Steel or Saunders, or use Saunders to get Steel, and hopefully they would incriminate themselves in the Retterdam murders. Whether a meet, if it had ever happened, would have assisted the police in any way is extremely doubtful. Sarah Saunders was in touch with the police. She was approachable, and when she became terrified by the news she was hearing from Steele and his partner about the IRA threats from Billy and John, she went to the police herself to seek police advice and protection. It doesn't suggest she was someone beyond reach. According to Steele, before his arrest in mid-May 96 on a drug-related matter, there was no attempt made in any shape or form by Dibley's retident investigators to contact him in connection with their inquiries. Given that Detective Superintendent Ivan Dibley had claimed that Michael Steele was one of the main suspects from day one, you wonder, are Price Century 